Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper, and today is a very special episode. I've been waiting a long time to do it, and to help me with it, I figured I'd ask Amber to help me out. Oh, hey, our banana showed up. Sweet. Okay, right, cool. Hey, could you help me with today's episode? Uh, yeah, sure. What's that about? Awesome. Um, oh, well, the, the title of it is Teabagging and Shit Eating for post No! No! Fuck what are you doing? I need your help! I need your help! No! I need your help! YouTube, this is Praxis. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to take human excrement and turn it back into compost and then into food that you can eat, you know, kind of eating your own shit uh, over, you know, recycling. And then uh, we're going to head inside and we're going to talk about teabagging. But first, we're out here by the uh, compost pile where I have been composting uh, excrement that I've pumped up out of the septic tank. I know all the warnings that everyone's given me in the past is the third video that I've done on this topic. Uh, you know, if you want to share with me how disgusting it is, you're welcome to. I'm well aware of it, and I'm pretty grossed out by it too, but I wanted to do the experiment. Uh, last year, I went in here, I did a video very similar to what you're about to see, uh, but last year, uh, what I found was that leaving this stuff over the winter with a tarp over it, uh, keeping it all dry on the inside, really prevented the, uh, the composting process from happening. Uh, half of the pile was left sort of open to let, you know, moisture in, the other half of the pile was, uh, you know, like I said, tarped, and the tarp side didn't break down at all. Uh, you know, I was trying to pick through it, and it was like the, the sticks were just like rebar, and it just it, it had not composted it at all. So this last winter, I left this thing pretty much open, uh, and you know, let snow fall on it uh, so that you know, you know, it could stay moist. The, the you know the composting process could continue, and I'm about to go in here and get a sense of what things look like on the inside in there. My sense and my hope is that the entire pile this time is going to be a lot more uh, composted and, and broken down than it was last year. The reason that I did the tarp initially was because, you know, one of the things you need to be uh, cautious about when you're doing any kind of composting with human excrement is you don't want there to be kind of like runoff. Like if it rains a lot on the pile, you don't want it like you know, that water to be kind of washing through it and washing things from the pile out into other areas. So you got to be, uh, you know, quite a bit more cautious with it. Uh, so that's why I tarped it. And I still have the tarp on the side so that when it is, you know, there's going to be heavy rain or something, I can throw that over top so, to prevent that. But I did allow water to get into it over the winter, and we're going to hop in here and see how shitty it is in there, to be quite frank. If you saw some of my previous videos from other years, uh, you'll notice another change that I have is that I have a pitchfork this year. In the past, I didn't own a pitchfork, so I was just using a straight edge rake. I don't know that that was necessarily the best tool for this, so now I've got a real pitchfork, and uh, you know, hopefully this will let me get in there and really see what's going on. So I'm just going to start, and we're going to find out together. All right, so it's still pretty, it's still pretty sticky. There's a lot of stick going on in here. I'm going to try not to fling any of this up at my face. The method that I used for creating this pile is I took a lot of sticks, uh, you know, and, and dried leaf yard waste, made a big pile, and then I pumped uh, sewage directly up out of my uh, septic system. Uh, I, I created a special adapter for the septic system where I could pump out, and I would just pump the stuff over the top. The sticks and the, you know, the dried leaves have a lot of carbon in, in them, and there was a lot of nitrogen in the, uh, you know, the sludge from the sewer. So combining the carbon and the nitrogen is what makes the, uh, the compostable materials happen. Okay, so this is still pretty locked up. <clears throat> Some of it kicked at my nose. Let's see. All right, what I am seeing is I am seeing there are some decomposed leaves in here, and they're looking pretty good, actually. It's looking like nice dark earth. I'm going to kind of grab the top here, pull that down. It's actually looking pretty good. I'm a little freaked out by all these spring-loaded sticks in here. <laughs> they're flinging stuff everywhere. Uh, last year, when I was looking through here, there were a lot of like creepy things, like worms, like not like earthworms. Oh, there's a there's a poor little newt <laughs> living in there. Um, but there were like like tiny little creepy worms <laughs> and things like the, the things you see like you know parasitic worms and everything. So uh, I saw some of that this time. I'm not seeing a lot of that going on here. You know, one other thing that I'm noticing here is that this, it doesn't smell like what it smelt like when I pumped it up out of the septic system. This smells like, like real good 
earth, soil. I, I'm still a little freaked out. I don't want to go sticking my hands in there. I don't want to be making love to this earth or anything. But uh, man, it just it smells like really good uh, composted soil. So what did compost here seems like it did a pretty go a good job of it. It's just a uh, an issue of having a lot of these uh, a lot of these sticks that did not break down. But uh, yeah, it 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 doesn't smell shitty. So it is. There is definitely a lot of stuff breaking down. It definitely looks like it's turning into a dark, rich earth. But there's still an awful lot of sticks in here. So I'm thinking that if you're going to use sticks and you're going to put human excrement on them, it's going to take, it's going to take several years because this, this pile has been here for about two years and it is still, still mostly just stick. And I let water, uh, I let water fall onto this. So, uh, you know, Maybe I, uh, if I put more leaves in there, again, this is mostly just like sticks and things like that. Uh, you know, maybe if I had more leaves kind of layered in there like a lasagna, that would have helped. But overall, my sense is that this is, oh, here's some good dirt down here. Oh, wow, that looks totally like dirt. Yeah. Overall, my sense is that the, this is a lot of sticks, and it's going to take several more years for this to break down. And that's the end of this experiment. This was really just an experiment all the time. I live in New England. We have forests all around us. There's not really any need for me to know how to do this because if I want organic material, I just have to go into the forest and I can pick it up. It's all over the place. But I wanted to experiment with this, get a sense of it. For people who live in an environment where there's not a lot of organic material, I wanted to you know, share with you guys what my experiences were on this. And uh, so far, it seems like it's actually working. This is like, wow, this is pretty good looking dirt but it's mixed in with a lot of a lot of just stick so there you go okay well, why don't we uh, we'll leave this here and then we're going to head inside and we're going to do some tea bagging now that i'm inside we can get to the second part of the video which is tea bagging or making tea from tea bags i i'm sorry i just couldn't resist doing the video with the title that i chose it they seem to just marry each other. I know they're kind of different topics, but they're both important. And the reason that tea is so important, this is a Bigelow constant comment tea. I don't buy a lot of tea bags. I usually kind of make my own, but I do like this one, so I have this one. The reason that tea is an important thing is not because it's just, you know, it's nice and relaxing and, and it is all those things, but also tea is a great way of getting uh, different medicines into your body, uh, you know, getting the health properties of a lot of plants. I've done a whole series, here's a link to it, on wild edible plants. Some wild edible plants you don't necessarily just eat. There are some, like sweet fern, this is a good example, that uh, you're not going to eat the leaves, but they make a really good tea. Also, yarrow is an, a, another example of a, uh, a plant that can be brewed into a tea with lots of different health benefits to it. Uh, and if you're not into necessarily stocking up a lot of tea bags, you can use tea balls. Here's a tea ball. Here's another tea ball. Here's an even bigger tea ball. They're all about the same thing. It's an enclosed space. It can be opened up. You put leaves or whatever you want to put on the inside, they click shut, they have a little chain and a hook, and you just pop it into hot water, the hook goes on the side so it's easy to take out later, and that's, and that's it. And like I said, there are a lot of things that you can uh, unlock the health benefits from if you can learn how to make tea on your own. And if you don't have, say, ah, they're all hooking onto each other, if you don't have a tea ball, or a tea kettle. This is a tea kettle with a little mesh screen. The way this thing works is you just put the leaves in there, pour the hot water over the top, close it up, and it steeps. Then you pour it out that way. If you don't have any of those kind of specialty products, you can use all sorts of other things. Here is a coffee strainer thing from like a coffee making machine. You take something like this. Um, let's say here's just some loose tea I have here in a jar. I keep a lot of my, my loose tea in jars. You put your tea in there. That's way more tea than you would actually want to you know, may usually use like a teaspoon or something like that for, you know, a cup or so of tea. But you put your tea in here, put the hot water in, let it steep for a while, the leaves are all floating around in there. You could drink it just like that, but then you get all the leaves and it's just kind of, you know, unpleasant. Or what you could do is maybe take a funnel, put your little strainer thing in there, put that into your cup, and then you put the water right in there. The tea leaves will stay in the coffee filter, and then underneath here you'd have your your tea. If you don't even have that, you could do something as simple as if you if you can have a funnel, just a clean piece of cloth. Take a clean piece of cloth, put it over the funnel, kind of nest it in a little bit. Same deal right over the cup. You can pour 
your swill of leaves and tea right through there and everything's going to stop at the clean cloth and then you have your tea underneath. It's a great skill to have because again there's a lot of health benefits to a lot of the wild edibles that grow in your area that are best unlocked by using tea and again it is a nice relaxing thing and in stressful times like a collapse or an SHTF event or any kind of an emergency sometimes just having some warm tea can help to calm people down give people something to do and, uh, and let people focus their mind on uh, you know, the task at hand as opposed to freaking out. So there you go. That's it. I hope you found that helpful, not too gross. Shit eating and teabagging together at last. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.